Hi, so this is um, just a quick introduction to how we can actually find the Schrodinger equation, one of the most uh, important equations in quantum mechanics. Uh, I would say arguably the most important equation in quantum mechanics. And it's pretty cool that you can actually derive this. So this is actually something that I've only ever seen in Thomas More. Uh, it's something that he's kind of put together, and it's, it's a clever little thing. So it's, it's, worth, it's worth learning, uh, because if nothing else, you can impress your friends, um, depending on who your friends are. Uh, so here's the basic idea. We want to uh, find a general way of relating um, basically the energy of things to the wave function and actually find a way to find wave functions um, and actually solve them numerically. It turns out that we're going to start with uh, the de Broglie hypothesis or the de Broglie equation, which just says that um, the wavelength is equal to h over p, uh, so, so um, uh, h over momentum. Um, because we know that there's something about the wavelength that actually is important for the Schrodinger equation uh, or for, for the wave function. We've already seen that the actual uh, wavelength uh, of things uh, ends up playing into a lot of what's happening. A lot of times we actually get wavy things when we actually try to solve uh, equations for, um, the, um, for, the, the, uh, for uh, wave functions. Um, but the thing is, we don't actually want to deal with lambda. We want to deal with something that, um, so, that, so we, we, the, the real question is, how do we, how, how to turn this into, um, something with, uh, with the wave function, whoops, something with, uh, psi. Um, so if you think about it, uh, so let's think about for a second what wavelength is about. A uh, wavelength, it turns out, um, uh, what it's really telling you is how curvy something is. So you notice the thing at the bottom is more curvy. So these are really technical terms. This is less curvy. Um, and it turns out we actually have a mathematical function that actually tells us about curvature. Um, uh, it's, called, uh, it's called the second derivative. Um, and if you take the second derivative, for instance, with respect to x of psi, it will give you the curvature of that, uh, that actual function. Now, the problem is, is it turns out that uh, the second derivative gets bigger whenever, uh, the, um, whenever the equation gets bigger. So if you have, um, uh, sorry, whenever the, the amplitude gets bigger. And so if you have, uh, let's say, a second one that looks like this it actually has the exact same wavelength but is bigger the second derivative will actually be bigger so um e squared psi the x squared is bigger um for this one um the good thing the good news is and, and we don't want that we we want uh we want to we just want to be measuring the curvature the wavelength of this thing it turns out this is actually pretty straightforward you actually just have to divide it by psi um and that will uh, that that will get rid of the uh, the 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 um, fact that it gets bigger as the wave gets bigger, and now we're just measuring curviness. So we're going to pretend that uh, this actually um, this curviness function uh, has to do with the wavelength. Now one now one thing that we know is that it's not going to be proportional wavelength because um, things that have a smaller wavelength um, are going to have a, a, a higher second derivative. Whereas things that have a larger wavelength are going to have a smaller second derivative, and so it's going to have um, it's going to be proportional to one over the wavelength, um, uh, which I think is 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 pretty straightforward to see if you just kind of sit uh, sit around and, and think about it for a, a, a while. Um, you also will see that actually to um, to get any kind of actual meaningful things out of this, um, uh, we actually need a squared here, and the reason we need a squared here. Um, is because it's just actually a dimensional analysis. Um, this thing has units of one over um, length squared. And so this thing has to have units of one over length squared. And so we're gonna just, um, we're gonna write this, uh, uh, an equation that looks like this. Um, uh, and so the only thing that's kind of left to do is deal with the fact that, um, uh, first of all, we, we have this proportion here. It turns out we can make it an equals, um, let's make sure I'm doing this right. 
It turns out we can make that in equals if we just put uh, a, um, a 1 over 4 pi squared on this side. Um, so if we just put a uh, 4 pi squared over there, then that is just equal to 1 over psi squared. And that has to do with the actual, the, the way that waves work. Um, and we're not going to worry too much about that. I, I, I'll just tell you that that is the actual way that, that you can make that inequality instead of a proportion. Um, so now we can just take our, uh, our de Broglie relation and bring it down here. Um, so we get d squared psi of x over, over uh, sorry, this is the second derivative with respect to x over 4 pi squared psi of x. And that's just going to equal 1 over lambda squared, but 1 over lambda squared is just going to give us um, uh, is just going to give us an actual uh, um, uh, uh, sorry, let me make sure I get this right. Uh, 1 over lambda squared is just going to give us a p squared over h squared. Okay, um, so that's not maybe not looking that promising unless you realize, well, wait a second, um, I can actually uh, put a 1 over 2m over here. So if I put a 2, um, a 2m on the bottom here, and I put a 1 over 2m over here, now I've got p squared over 2m. Uh, p squared over 2m is just equal to the kinetic energy. So this is just kinetic energy divided by h squared. All right, so we're getting somewhere now. Uh, you're going to be amazed at how quickly this uh, fixes up. Um, uh, I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to bring my h squared uh, over to the other side. So I'm going to have an h squared uh, over 4 pi squared. It turns out that's just going to give us an h bar squared, so we're going to we're going to deal with that. I'm going to keep my one over two m over here, and I still have my d squared psi over dx squared. I'm going to start to stop uh, including the dependence with x. You, you'll just have to remember it. Um, and this is all equal to just k, but k we're actually going to write this in a different way. Is actually the total energy minus the potential energy. Um, it turns out that's actually how we normally write the Schrodinger equation. Um, all right, and again, as I said before, this is h bar squared if we just do this whole term here because h, h over 2 pi is h bar. So when we put that all together and we bring this psi over here, we are going to get the Schrodinger equation, which is h bar squared over 2m times d squared psi dx squared is equal to e minus v times psi. And that is... The Schrodinger equation. Um, uh, there's many different ways that you can write it, but that's um, that's that's one of the ways of writing it. Um, and so it's pretty cool. Uh, we've just derived one of the most important equations in all of quantum mechanics. So there you go.